guys and welcome back to another client tutorial today I'm here with my lifelong friend Ellie and I'm going to show you how to achieve this green halo eye or spotlight eye whatever you like to call it so I'm starting with the P Louise eye base I love this eye base putting this all over her eyelid and this is just going to be a nice base for our eyeshadows to ensure that they go on and blend easily colors come out vibrant and the eyeshadow lasts all day long I'm going to take a mixture of these two Inglot eyeshadows that I'm pointing at. I don't know the numbers of these because once they're in the palette, it's so annoying to get them out and see the back of them because they're magnetic and every time I try, I put a dint in them, so I'm really sorry. I don't know the exact numbers, but I'm going in with them, building them up in the crease, then going back in with this slightly darker orange shade and putting that through the crease. So my prime rule with eyeshadow is the lighter the eyeshadow, the higher you bring it. The darker you start to get, the lower you should keep it. So I'm just um, building up the colour. I always start lightest and then work to darkest. Now I'm going in with a more brown tone, um, still with an orange undertone. And all the eyeshadows I use apart from one today, I think are Inglot. Now I'm going in with the chocolate brown from Inglot. I do know this number. No, I don't. Nope. I do not know the number of this one, sorry. <laughs> um, so I'm going in with that. Because this is a spotlight eye, I'm going to be concentrating the color through the crease and on the outer V and also the inner corner because we're gonna have that pop of green right in the center of the eye. Now I'm taking the black from the Huda Beauty palette, the Huda, blah, 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 <laughs> the Huda Beauty palette and putting that on the outer V and the inner corner as well to really just accentuate and make that center of the eye really pop. Now I'm just taking a little bit of the Inglot White Gel Liner and I'm just going to be placing this in the center of the eye where we really want it to be the brightest. So the tip when you're doing a spotlight eye is you want the center of the eye to be the brightest. So you want to start with your outer corner and inner corner being the darkest and then gradually build to the lightest um, point being in the center. So by putting this um, white gel liner just in the center is going to help lighten that up. If you don't have a gel white eyeliner, you can use concealer. And then I'm just going in now and blending the edges so there's no harsh lines. Now I'm taking a little bit of Too Faced Glitter Glue and prepping our eyes for pigments. Every time I use loose glitters or loose pigments, always use some sort of glitter ad adhesive. Um, it's just going to help your glitters stick and last all day. So I'm starting with the Inglot pigment in the number 31, which is a really nice kind of khaki green. And I'm putting that, as you can kind of see, on the outer center of the eye. <laughs> That's the best way to describe it, because I'm going to go in with a lighter green in the center of the eye. Now I'm going to take MAC Golden Olive Pigment. This is my favorite green pigment. I use it all the time when I do green looks. Um, did I tell you the color of it? Oh my god, I've lost the plot. It's um, MAC Golden Olive. I can't remember. I probably said it. But yeah, it's got gold reflect through it. So that's what I like about it. It makes it a little bit more wearable. So I'm putting that in the center of the eye. Then I'm taking a little bit of the P. Louise pigment in the shade Icy and just popping that right over top, right in the middle because um, the other two pigments I use are more metallic and not sparkly, whereas this P. Louise one has more sparkle to it. So I'm just popping that right in the center of the eye to add that bit of wow factor and a bit of sparkle. <laughs> Once I put the pigment on, I'm just going back over and blending the edges because there's nothing worse than seeing like just a line where your pigment or your glitter stops. So always make sure you go back in, give it a bit of a blend so everything's seamless. Now this is why I do the eyes first, just cleaning up any fallout. And Ali's got more dry skin, so I'm going in with the Too Faced Hangover Primer to prime her skin. So her foundation goes on flawlessly and lasts all day. And now I'm taking a mixture of Nashi Glow in the shade Punjab and Barcelona. And I'm going to bounce that with my Beauty Blender all over her face. So 
now I'm going to take a little bit of MAC Pro Longwear Concealer in the shade NC30 and just pop this under her eyes to cover any darkness and just to overall brighten up the face. So now I'm about to start our airbrushing alley with the Temp2 Silicon Base Foundation. As you can see here, this is airbrushing. So it's done through a little spray gun and I'm just spraying foundation on her face. You can do a whole face with airbrush, but I just like it for foundation. So the benefits of doing this with your foundation, it'll make your foundation sweat resistant, water resistant, transfer resistant, ultra long wearing, um, great for photos and photography, and it's a really flawless full coverage. So yeah, I always recommend this to my clients when you have an event where you're gonna have your makeup on for a long time. I like to do a base layer of normal foundation underneath, like the NARS, because I just find it gives a little bit more coverage to it and has a better finish. So yeah, that's pretty much all the benefits of the airbrush, and as you can see, I kind of spray it on your face in little circular motions. So once that's all on, you've got to make sure you set it properly. So I'm going in with the Ben Nye Neutral Set, color colorless, god that is a tongue twister, colorless powder, and using a brush and just pressing in, you never want to rub, you just want to press. And then when I set under the eyes with a bit of translucent powder like I did just then, I always use my Beauty Blender. I find it gives a better finish. And then I'm taking the MAC Studio Fix Powder in the shade C30 to press in any areas I want a little bit more coverage. So translucent powder will set your face and powder foundation will add more coverage and colour. So now I'm just contouring her face with the Kat Von D Shade and Light. So I'm going underneath the cheekbone, a little bit on the forehead and down the nose to add a little bit of definition to her face. I'm taking my fave bronzer ever, Mac Gimme Sun. It's a beautiful, like warm bronzer, pretty much. And I'm popping that all over her cheeks just to warm her up and add a bit of color back into her face. So I always just kind of apply bronzer where you would apply blush. Um, so kind of above the contour on the apples of the cheeks and now I'm taking a little bit of Max Melba blush and Mixing that in with the bronzer and putting a little bit of that on the cheeks as well Blush is such a game changer like I think so many people think the blush is just straight up pink But if you find nice peachy ones and terracotta shades, they're beautiful So now I'm taking the Mac hyper real glow palette and highlighting her face so I'm putting it um, on the high points of her cheekbones down the center of her nose and her cupid's bow to add that luminous glow. Now I'm going to do her brow so I'm taking a mixture of the Anastasia pomade in the shade medium brown and the Sigma brow powder. Now Ali likes a defined brow I told her for this video she's got to let me do them how I want to do them so they're probably not oh my god can you hear my dog crying you need to stop Sorry guys, I had to pause. Mum duties, had to let my dog out. Anyways, I'm back and I'm better than ever. So as I was saying, I'm just filling in her brows. So why I use a mixture of the pomade and powder? The pomade is gonna give that more structured look that Ali likes, um, especially towards the tail. And then I like going in with a bit of powder, um, which you'll see in a minute, on top, as it kind of just softens it and makes them not look so harsh on the face. <music> So now I'm just going in with the colours we used through the crease from Inglot and repeating the same process I did on top except on her lower lash line now. So I'm starting with the lightest colour and then building up to the darkest just to create a bit of smokiness under the eye. I hate doing eyeshadow without anything under the eye, like I think it makes such a difference, it makes people's eyes pop. I just feel like you look so top heavy if you haven't got anything under the bottom. So I love really smoking looks out by doing a kind of bit more dramatic under eye. So yeah, I've started with like the orange tones then into the dark browns and then here I'm just doing a little bit of black. So as I get to the darker colours of the black, I use a tiny little brush so I can press it as close to her lower lash line as possible. So now I'm taking the Inglot Sparkle Dust in the shade 02 and this is my favourite product for the inner corners and I'm just putting that on the inner corners for that intense kind of sparkle. You'll see the moment here where Ali nearly stuffed up the whole makeup look by thinking she's funny right now. <laughs> nearly made me stuff up her eyeliner. Little shit. 
Oh shit, I'm recording. <laughs> Whoops. So now I'm going in with the Inglot Gel Liner in 77, which is just the black one, and I'm going to create a little wing. So today I'm using a really thin angled brush, and I start by just lining the top lash line. Then I'll get her to look straight ahead with eyes open, and map out a line for my wing, get her to shut her eyes, um, connect the wing to the line on the eye, then colour it in. This is just the best method I find for getting the best wing to suit their eye shape. Now we were a little bit naughty today and we just put a tiny bit of mascara on the tips of Ali's lash extensions. You shouldn't really put anything on extensions but sometimes all the eyeshadow can just, you can lose the extensions a bit and they can look a bit grey. So I just put a little bit on top to add a bit of life back and a little bit of mascara underneath. And we're not bothering with fakies because she's got beautiful volume lashes. And now I'm just going in with um, MAC Peach Stock Lippy and popping this all over her lips. And then I'm going to put a little bit of Kylie Cosmetics Exposed Gloss on top. I like this gloss um, on top with this look because it's got like a warm peachy undertone which goes well with the oranges in the eyes. Oh, we get a little bit sweaty when we're doing our tutorials. <laughs> and then I'm taking the Scandinavia Makeup Finishing Spray, the brighter one, and setting her face so she's good to go. And here's a before and after. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Finally, I'm not doing it on my sister. I do know other people. I do have other friends. <laughs> so yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. Ali has the best face for this green look because greens look so good on green eyes and she's got beautiful green eyes. So yeah, don't forget to subscribe, give me a like, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.